Right, Crafty Review, and uh, we have a privilege to come to you today. Uh, it's the last day of Beer Week, Arizona Beer Week 2015, and uh, we're going to go out with a bang. Uh, the folks at Saddle Mountain Brewing out here in Goodyear, Arizona, have been kind enough to let us set up shop, and I kind of like to think of them as a community-type brewery. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of the work that they've gone into with the city of Goodyear and uh, the process in which it took place to, to get them open and so forth, uh, the city really embraced them and said, we want you guys to do business, we want you guys to brew beer. And uh, they actually kind of pulled some strings and changed a little bit of things as far as zoning and so forth yep. to, to make everything possible here. So hats off to Goodyear. And uh, making the first microbrewery out here in Goodyear, Arizona become reality. Um, for anybody that's familiar with the valley, there's not a whole lot on the west side. Uh, this was a breath of fresh, of fresh air by, by a long shot, right? Yeah, and what was great is, I mean, for those of you that keep up with some of the craft beer news and laws and stuff, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in Arizona and legislation. Um, in my personal opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, laws that are starting to restrict the craft beer community from really expanding it and growing and bringing it, uh, you know, bringing some of these great breweries out to the public. And so, what I loved about you know hearing the backstory of Saddle Mountain and the city of Goodyear was it's a perfect example of. When the you know when when the city government can understand what the brewery's intention is and that they want to help the community, they want to be a staple, and they work together. And yeah, it's going to probably take a look at some laws or legislation that maybe not might need to be revised to catch up with the time. Uh, when they work together for a common goal, you can have some great beer, a great small business, um, and uh, you know something, something to give the, com back. the community can can gather around it and you know. Yeah, and then the city of Goodyear wins. The people of Goodyear win, um, and it's just great all the way around. So yeah. it was great to see Goodyear and uh, Saddle Mountain work together to get something done. I totally agree. Uh, so what they have here is they have basically have their tail dragger line of beers. Um, and this is a concept that they have that's actually honoring all their service uh, men and women as long as they're the first responders. We just want to let you know that there's always a standing 10% discount to uh, service men and women as far and as well as the uh, first responders. And uh, they have a little bit of something for everybody, from you know basic blondes that they like to introduce people to craft beer. It's very good beer to introduce yeah. people. It's uh, not over the top. Uh, it's very easy to drink. And then obviously uh, going all the way over to the total opposite side of the spectrum with their IPAs. Yep. And uh, well, they have uh, a lot of charities that they work with as well. Um, they work with the Arizona Honor Flights and the uh, Fighting Country uh, as well. So they again very community based giving back to the community as well, which is always a huge plus for anybody that we do business or you know, we set up and do reviews with. Yep. Because we want to push local beer first, and we've said that many times, and for them to give back to the community, everybody's, you know, everybody's benefiting. Yeah. You know, I think it just shows too that it, it's not just a place for people to go and get drunk. No, yeah, it happens from time to time. It's a gathering spot. But, but it really is a gathering spot, and it's a way that, and we're starting to see more of it with breweries starting to partner up with organizations for a cause. Uh, because we want to be known more than just drinking beer and having a good time. We really want to give back to the community that's done so well for us. Um, and I think Saddle Mountain does a really outstanding job with the servicemen and women and responders to help give back. I mean, we'll never be able to give them what oh, they no, give us, course. but any little bit we can do to show our appreciation and businesses show appreciation. Yep. There you go. That's exactly. what we need more of. So, so good job. Yep. Today, so we're actually going to uh, do a review on their uh, Hop Snob. It's their West Coast style IPA. But what I actually, we've uh, kind of coined the phrase, is uh, uh, Southwest IPA, giving all uh, props to Arizona, right? Yeah. Uh, so Gabe's going to look at some of the specs on the beer and fill <coughs> in on some of that stuff. Yeah, so uh, this beer, like Londo was saying, is a West Coast IPA. For those of you that aren't familiar with West Coast, um, it actually would derive from California, but a um, lot more hoppier, a lot more bitterness than, uh, than your typical Indian pale ale or India pale ale um, so it's gonna have a lot more bite to it, a lot more bitterness what's kind of interesting though about West Coast that a lot of breweries are starting to do is it used to be let's just pound you with a lot of bitterness and hops and and let you get that shock factor what a lot of breweries are starting to do is yeah we want you to we want to get hit you we want to hit you with that hop flavor but let's try to clean it up let's try to balance it out so that it's actually a smooth drinking. You get a lot of flavor with it, um, but it's a smooth drinking uh, style of beer. Yep. Yep. And so we're starting to see a lot of the West Coast IPAs that are starting to come out um, sort of have that kind of profile yep. or that goal in mind. Um, so when we look at the uh, the recipe build for 
uh, hops knob. Um, the malt bill is going to be pale malt, crystal 40, which are pretty basic, um, pretty basic uh, malts to have, um, especially for an IPA. Um, but then we're going to start talking about some of the hops, whole bunch of them in this mix. Um, we have Warrior Hops, uh, Chinook Hops, Centennial, Columbus, and Cascade. Um, all traditional profiles yep. for a West Coast style yep. IPA. So you're going to get some spiciness there. You're going to get some citrus flavor. You're going to get some grapefruit. Um, so um, all of them, you know, really good mix um, uh, a variety to have with an IPA, especially with, with the West Coast IPA. Right. Um, so on the IBU scale, we're looking at a 50, which is actually pretty interesting. I was expecting it to be a little bit higher up. Yeah, but I mentioned the same thing but to the owner. I don't, I don't want to fall into my own, uh, you know, go against my own advice that I give. Don't let the IBU uh, scale scare you. You know, it's just an indicator. Um, let your palate speak for itself. Mm -hmm. um, but we are looking at a 6.5 on the ABV scale. So it's going to be a little bit harder than, than some of your uh, casual drinks that you might have. But, but yep. there have been uh, higher ABV at West Coast IPs that we've had. Yeah. So this, to me, this is like right in the middle of the yep. zone. So, yep. well, we're going to give it a shot and obviously tell you what we think. So you got that. You know, golden color, like a dark, yeah, nice copper, dark lighter, lighter, lighter color, color, caramel to, uh, tone to it. Yep. The hops are there. Yep, the hops are there. I, awesome. I get some of that citrus right at the beginning. Love it. So I get picked up a lot of the citrus notes, which is staple for West Coast. Yep. It's definitely what a hop uh, West Coast IPA is. Like I said, it's going to hit you with that strong hoppy flavor um, right from the beginning but initially I get obviously that bitterness that that um, full front you know diesel truck of a hop right but to me I get like the citrusy I taste a lot of grapefruit um, and I don't know I think only two of those hops actually have a, a, a grapefruit profile. aroma to it or, or, or a flavor profile to it but I don't know if it was just maybe the amount that they use I taste a lot of grapefruit a lot of citrusy um, but Good bitterness too, not overbearing, yeah. not shocking bitterness. Nice clean. What do you think? The the malt finish on it actually kind of helps clean it up on the very end, yeah. which is exactly what you mentioned just a bit ago. But yes, hops up in the nose, and I have to have the nose. And I mentioned this before. If you don't get the nose, and then you follow it up with the taste to marry everything together, sometimes I miss something. This actually has everything to go with it. So uh, nice clean malt finish uh, to kind of even up the bitterness. But the hops, the hops are there. It's definitely for a hop head. Definitely, definitely a hop head. A uh, scale of uh, one to five, what are you going to do? It's good, man. And I'm, I'm a sucker for IPAs. You've watched at least three videos, two videos, you know that. I mention it every single time. And I love West Coast IPAs. I love San Diego beers. Um, so on a scale of one to five, I'm going to give it four and three-fourths, man. It really is. And I, I got to say, I mean, it's of the IPAs, and this isn't to badmouth any other breweries out there, of the IPAs in Arizona, I think, at least for now, it's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and uh, challenge everybody else that's doing any type of West Coast IPA. I know we did one over at uh, also a few weeks yep. back, and I think I gave theirs a four and three quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, hats off to also, but Saddle Mountain, in my opinion, has got you beat by a quarter. So I'm gonna give it a five. Nice man, I Good. give it a five. Um, I want to push the Southwest style IPA. Uh, West Coast <laughs> has obviously uh, been a, a trailblazer for this style of beer. Yep, but. Arizona um, is, is on the map when it comes to this, and Saddle Mountain is, is definitely a, a forerunner, in my opinion. Yeah, so definitely. Would you tap it? I'd tap the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you just grab this, weird to that. Yeah, but no, definitely, really, really good beer. Um, and I think, I don't want to speak incorrectly here, but I think it's a relatively new beer um, for the brewery. Yes. But, I mean, as far as our opinion will go, we've made sure to tell them, you got gold right here, man. Exactly. If, if you can keep it going and, and keep that recipe there and maybe make some tweaks here and there, nothing too crazy, but if you can keep that on tap handle, you know, I'll be here every week, man, if I'm not, if I don't watch out. But right. well, definitely a good beer. To make it official, I'll definitely tap the shit out of this yep. beer. And uh, talking with the owner, Jacob, I asked him, is this going to be a staple beer for you? He's like, you know, we've got a lot of positive responses. Obviously, it goes to show. Um, so I, I, I hope they move forward with it. Uh, they got about seven or eight beers on tap along with seasonals throughout the year. Uh, this is definitely one that people will enjoy year-round. Definitely. Yep. But uh, hey, well that's it. You got uh, Hop Snob, West Coast style, uh, Southwest style IPA over here at Saddle Mountain. Goodyear, Arizona. Uh, we're tapping it the last day of Arizona Beer Week 2015 and I couldn't think of a better place than right here in our own backyard on the west side to, to celebrate it. There you go. And, uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you. 
Uh, don't forget your growler. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.